A new series called Shine the Light. Shine the Light. And uh, I'm praying that this is going to help you. Today's message, I pray, will help you grow in your faith. I, I really do. Um, we're going to talk about one of the most misused verses in the scripture today. And, uh, and, and it, what we want to do is we want to shine the light on God's word. Because a lot of times we'll take scripture out of context and we'll use it in ways, maybe because we've heard it for a long time over the years, that this is what this meant. And today's uh, misused verse that we're going to talk about is a verse that so many people misuse. And because they misuse it, a lot of times they walk away from the faith and their, their walk with God because of this. And so I think it's important that we really shine the light on, on some of these scriptures. And, and this week we're going to talk about ask anything. Next week we're going to talk about do not judge. Uh, and then the week after that we're going to talk about plans to prosper. And then the final week we're going to talk about the root of all evil. And so these are some things that we get confused on sometimes, and so we're going to shine the light on these things. Got some good series coming up. After this one, we're going to do one on the home. Uh, we're going to do four weeks on the home, and then after that, uh, this summer sometime, I'm going to send out an email, and I want you guys to respond. We're going to do a series called You Ask For It, and you're going to ask questions that you have, and that we're going to try to answer a lot of those during a service, and uh, don't ask me where dinosaurs come from, all right? Don't send that one, all right? 
We can debate on it all day, but we're going to talk about things that are in God's Word that we have questions about or something you want me to, you know, to explain. Or, and we're going to hit a, hot, a lot of these topics you know, that you've got questions about. I've got a, a series we're going to do, the, the end, the end time. Uh, we're going to do uh, some look at in Revelation. And so we've got some exciting things coming up. But uh, today we're going to go ahead and start this one, Shine the Light. And uh, so I'm looking forward to this series. Next week, do not judge. I mean, this next week's message is going to be relevant to everybody. Do not judge, so get your teenagers here, get everybody here, and uh, it's going to really, really be interesting as we break down uh, those scriptures there. But I'm looking forward to today and, and what God has, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get to Turn to John chapter 14. We're going to be looking in John today, and uh, uh, we're going to skip around at some different verses, but uh, I want to I look at this, because this is one of the most misused verses, and this is with Christians or non-Christians. You hear it, and, and we, we think about it, but uh, look, these are the words of Jesus here in John 14 and verse 13 and 14. Jesus said this in 13, I will do whatever you ask in my name so the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14, you may ask for it, anything in my name, and I will do it. Now, if you pray in faith in the name of Jesus, then you're supposed to get that job, right? I'm, I'm faithful. You know, I prayed for it. God said, if I ask for it, I'm going to get it. And so you ask for this job, or maybe this, this, this girl you got your eyes on, and you're wanting to date her, and you say, God, I'm a Christian, and I got faith, and I'm believing. So if I ask you, for, that girl's going to be my girlfriend, I'm going to get it, right? And so we start asking these things, and you think, well, look at the Scripture, and it says, well, if I ask, then God's going to give it to me. And, 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 you know, I'm going to play the lottery, and God, I love you, and I want to win the lottery, so if I ask for it, you're supposed to give it to me. But look, look, that's not, that's, not the, that's not the situation. You know, a lot of you have asked and prayed for things and you didn't get it. I, I've seen people walk away from the faith and they prayed for something and it didn't go the way they wanted it to. And they said, well, why would I serve a God that's not going to answer my prayers? The, Bible, the scripture says there in John, that if I ask for it, he's going to give it to me. You know, if I, in the name of Jesus, I ask for it. I remember as a kid, I had a, a, a dog. <clears throat> And uh, I love my dog, and, and uh, I guess I was a young teenager, maybe even younger than that. And uh, my dog got sick, and my dog started dying. And I remember praying to God, God, please don't let my dog die. Don't let my dog die. And I cried of that dog, and, and the dog died. And a lot of you have situations like that. You've, you've got situations you pray for and pray for, and yet it seems like God doesn't answer what you want and doesn't get you know, what you're praying for, and sometimes, you know, we, we don't understand, but, but, you know, we may look at this verse and say, well, obviously this verse is not true. You know, my dog died. Obviously this doesn't work. I mean, Jesus didn't answer my prayer the way that I wanted it to, so obviously it's not really working, or perhaps maybe we've got a twisted understanding of this verse, because a lot of times we pray, and we think, well, if I pray for it, God's supposed to grant it. But I think we need to look at this. I want to give you three simple thoughts, if you're taking notes, to find the real meaning here of the Scripture. Number one, whenever you're studying Scripture, when you shine the light on Scripture, and you're, you're really trying to understand you know, a verse or something that you're not sure about, number one, you need to understand the context. Number one, you understand the context. In other words, what came before it, this verse, what comes after this verse, who is writing this verse, and who is, who is the author inspired? Who are they writing to? And so you kind of look at the whole context and the big picture because so many times you and I do this. We'll pull one verse out and use it for our benefit, and it's not even the right way to use it. And I think a lot of times people say, if you just ask for it and you pray, you're going to get it. You know? And, and, and we need to understand that. We need to look at the context, and we're going to do this with John here. We're going to look at it uh, here in just a moment. But a lot of times we'll take a verse out of context. Now, number two, interpret Scripture with other Scripture. Whenever you're looking at Scripture and you're studying, you, you, you need to compare the Word with the Word. In other words, compare Scriptures and other parts of the Bible and where they're talking about it there, and you kind of line them up like that. We're not going to take one verse and get a theology out of it, you know, and our own religion or our own verse or use out of it. No, you have to take the whole context and then match it up with other Scriptures that you read, all 66 books, and then you look throughout the Bible and, and see the consistency of what he's talking about. And then number three, you need to apply what you learn. So you understand the context of it, you study Scripture with Scripture, and then you apply what you learn. So whenever you're shining the light on God's Word, this is kind of how, how we do it, because a lot of people, you want to study the Bible, and you want to know the Bible, but the Bible is not just a book for us to read, it's a book for us to live our life by. 
It's our instruction book. The Bible is there to show us how to live, and so we need to apply it to our, our life. Understand the context, interpret uh, Scripture with Scripture, and then learn how to apply it. Now, let's do this with John. Who wrote the book of John? This is easy. John, so you're going, is this a trick question? <laughs> I'm not saying it. Yeah, John wrote the book of John. All right, what's the main theme in the book of John? What's the main theme in the book of John, in case you don't know? It's that John is trying to prove that Jesus is the Son of God. That's the kind of theme of the whole book. So now we're kind of understanding what the book's about. Okay, then you, then you want to know, you know, kind of what the main idea of uh, the book of John is to prove Jesus is the Son of God. Let's look at uh, John in the very beginning of John 1.1. 1, 1, it talks about how the, you know, uh, the Word became flesh and Jesus, uh, the Word was with God, the Word was God. And then in verse 14, you skip on down in, in John, it talks about how the, the Word became flesh. The book of John in, in John 14 tells us a lot uh, before we get to these scriptures we just read in 13 and 14. But the first 12 verses is talking about when Jesus is sitting down with the disciples and he's sitting there telling them what's getting ready to happen. And he tells them, he says, don't be afraid, don't worry about it. I'm going, when I leave this earth, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm going to prepare a, a mansion, a room for you, a, a special place for you guys one day in heaven. So now he's kind of you know, teaching them this. So this is kind of what they're, what, what they're saying, and they're understanding that. And then he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. And Jesus is saying, but it's good that I go, because when I go, I'm going to send something even better. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. So you're going to be all right. You know, you're going to miss me for a little while, but I'm going to prepare a place for you, and I will come back and get you one day and take you to where I am. You see, Jesus is going to die on the cross, and he's going to uh, be raised from the dead, and he's going to be at the right hand of the Father preparing a place for us. But then it starts out, and Jesus, you know, he says, don't be afraid. I'm going to prepare a place. It's going to be good. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. But what's the context of John? What, what's the real big context? To prove that Jesus was the Son of God. John is looking through this, and he's proving that Jesus is the Son of God. But the big, the, the big theme here is, the preparation that he's doing for you and I. The, the, the big theme here in the book of John is really the preparation that he's going on to prepare a place for us. And so that's huge. And so as we read Scripture, we understand the context, we understand what Jesus is doing, what he's done for us, and, and it's all to bring glory to the Father. So John 14, 13, let's look at that again. Jesus said, I will do whatever you ask in my name. And then what does he say? He says, so that, so that what? so that the Father may be glorified of the Son. So that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You see, what just happened here, the reason God answers prayers is not so that our life will be better. It's not so that we will get whatever we want. That's not the whole idea of the Scriptures here. No, it's not so we can have more money. It's not so that we can have that house that we wanted. That's not the, that's not the thing. You see, it's about glorifying the Father with our life. And that's so important. But the reason is that we want to glorify him. Now, when we read this, it's not seeing ourselves as the main subject, but God is the main subject. We're not the main character in Scripture. Now, now stay with me on this, because so many people, you get discouraged when you pray for something, and it's a good thing, and you don't get it. You get discouraged. Maybe you've been praying about something recently, and you've been praying hard, and you've been on your knees praying, and God is not answering it the way that you want to. We're not the main character. What Jesus did for us on the cross, he gave his life so that our sins could be forgiven. We're his. He's the main character. He's the one that we bring glory to through our life. And that's so important. When you pray and you ask for something, it's to bring glory to him, and you pray it in his name. So why are we dealing with this today? Because so many people walk away from the faith because they don't get what they want. I've seen people lose loved ones. I just did a funeral uh, last week, and I sit and talk with um, this precious mother of this, you know, a lot of y'all know Tommy who passed away, and, and, and his mother asked me a question. You know, why would God take him? He's so young. Why would God take him from me so young? And there's just, there's answers that we don't have. But most of all, you and I need to understand that God's will be done. We are his servant. God is not our servant. God is not our servant to give us what we want, and we have to understand that. 
that, that, that we're his servant and we're to bring honor and glory to him. And that's so, so important. So understanding the context, now let's take a moment here as we translate scripture to scripture. I want to give you four things here, four things that you do when you pray. You need to realize that God cares about when we pray. When we pray these four, you know, we pray in these four things I want to show you, I think it's going to help you, especially if you're dealing with somebody right now that's struggling, you know, they're, they're praying and God's not answering their prayer. Maybe they can't find a job and they're looking and looking and looking. don't understand why God's not giving them a job. Maybe it's uh, something else that they, they've lost their faith because of prayer not being answered. Well, this is what God, what matters to God when you and I pray. Number one, your relationships matter. Your relationships matter to God. Look at Mark chapter 11 and verse 24. Mark 11 and verse 24, Jesus said this. He said, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Amazing verse. Verse 25, And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, what are you to do? You are to forgive them. Why? So that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. So here, I think relationships matter to, to God. When you're praying, if you're mad at somebody, what are you to do? You're to stop praying and go get that right. You're supposed to have your relationships. You're supposed to get those things right. You're not supposed to have an unforgiving heart when you go to pray. I think our relationships are so important, God says to, hey, go get that right. And then come back and pray. Go get that right. Go get that relationship right. You know, you can at least ask for forgiveness or you can tell them you forgive them or whatever it is and you get that right with them because it's going to hinder your prayers. Now, now listen, a lot of you have younger kids. And I remember my kids growing up and they would fight. Oh, they would, oh, especially riding down the road. It seems like on, on, when you're riding down the road, they're just fighting in the back seat. You know, you're going like this. You can't get them. You want to pull the car over and, you know, you just, they're driving you crazy. And so they're fighting and fussing, and they're just, man, they're just mean to each other. And then all of a sudden, one of them says, hey, can such and such come over and spend the night tonight? What are you going to say? <laughs> no! <laughs> you get this relationship right before anybody's coming, right? You see, as parents, we know how to discipline. We know how to, you know, work, make them work these things out. What well, matters to God, too. Our relationships with people that God has in our life, it matters to God. And so it says if we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, it's important that we get our relationships right. It's, it's important that we don't, you know, hold things against other people. And we, get, we forgive just as Christ has forgiven us. Here's the verse. Now, wives, don't elbow your husband, all right? Look straight ahead. Act like I'm talking to somebody else's husband, okay? So don't, don't. But here, husband, husband let's look at this verse. 1 Peter 3, 7. Because it's talking about how that, you know, if we're not right, even in our relationship at home, how that it affects our prayer life. 1 Peter 3, 7. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with what? Respect as the weaker partner and as heirs, look at that, heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that what? So that nothing will hinder your prayers. So that nothing will hinder your prayers. So in other words, if you're not right with your wife, or even for a wife, if not right with her husband, if you're not right with, you know, and it's something there, it hinders your prayers. I'm telling you, me and Kim get to fighting, and we'll be go, go to eat somewhere, you know, and we're still kind of going out. She'll say, pray, and I'll say, no, you pray. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It hinders you when you're not right, you know, and so God wants our, it matters to God, our relationships. You say, you and your wife fight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we fight fair, though. Some of you need to learn how to fight fair, but anyway relationships matter to God. So when we're praying, that's one thing that, you know, it, it matters to God. Number two, your motives matter to God. Your motives when you pray matters to God. You know, what your intent is. You know, it's amazing how some people, man, you know your intent and you're praying. You know, it's like you got one pulled over on, on the Lord, you know. It's like, you know, God understands, but you've got an ulterior motive. And, and, and you, James chapter 4 and verse 3 says this, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives. In the book of James, you ask, but you do not get it because you're asking for the wrong reasons. You've got an ulterior motive. And God's like, you know, James is like, God's not going to answer that. Your motives are not right because God cares about your motive. When you're praying for something, is it going to bring honor and glory to God? Do you have the right heart? 
Or is it more of you just wanting what you want, and if you get it, you'll be happy, and if not, you're going to be mad at God? You see, that's using God as a servant. No. We have to bring honor and glory to God in everything. And your motives of why you're praying to God matters. It was common in the day of Jesus, the Pharisees. Man, they, 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 man, they had wrong motives all the time. Jesus got on him so much. I mean, he was... He, but they would, they would, you know, they'd like to be heard. They'd like to be seen. they like to show their knowledge of all the scriptures that they knew. And, and they would stand on the street corners and they would pray these real elegant prayers so everybody would know that they were so spiritual. They had the wrong motives. And they weren't doing it for the right reason. They were doing it to be seen, to bring glory to themselves. And a lot of times we pray for things that's just for ourselves. And there's nothing wrong with praying for that. And I'll get to that more in a moment. There's nothing wrong with us praying for things that we want but most of all, it's got to be God's will. And so, you know, uh, we're a hypocrite when we really go to God with a wrong motive. You know, when, we, when we're going for the wrong reason, we're just trying to use God, we're, we're really a hypocrite. So, you know, single ladies, you got your eyes on this hot guy. Lord, I know he don't go to church. I know he's not a Christian, but he looks good. God save him so I can date him. <laughs> we pray things like that, yeah. We do. We have an arterial motive all along. And you pray, Lord, I want to date him, but you've got to save him. Proverbs 16.2 says this, All a person's ways seem to be pure to them, but the motives are weighed by the Lord. The motives are weighed by the Lord. You see, he's wanting to know your motive, and your motive and my motive when we pray matters to him. And a lot of times our prayers are not answered because we have the wrong motive. And God knows that. You can't trick God. I can't trick God. It's amazing how sometimes we try to do that. We try to justify it. We'll justify with God. And he's just sitting back laughing. You got the wrong motive. But it matters to him. Number three, your faith ap appears to matter to God when you pray. Your faith matters when you pray. When you pray, do you really believe that God is going to do it? Do you really believe it or do you just hope? Do you just kind of think he can do it, or maybe there's a slight possibility? Well, look what James says in, in chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, because James is going to talk about this. He says, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like the wave of a sea, blown and tossed by the wind. And that person should not expect to do what? That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. If you and I doubt, and we really don't have faith, It matters to him. It matters to him if we really believe it. Even if he doesn't do it, we believe that he can do it. We know that he can do it. Even if he doesn't do it, we have that. Some of you have heard your, your child pray. I mean, your young child pray. Children have the most pure prayers, the most innocent prayers. I mean, they'll pray. You've heard them. They'll pray believing that God's going to do it. I mean, they'll pray with the most sincere heart as if the Lord is sitting right there with them. A childlike faith. And a lot of times we as parents, we're going, well, they can keep praying that, but God's not going to do that. And we have that kind of faith sometimes as adults, you know. That just doesn't make sense. God's surely not going to do that. I remember somebody telling me a story one time where a kid was praying for a cat. Mom and dad says, well, they can keep praying for a cat. We're not getting no cat, you know. <laughs> And then not too long after that, a cat came up to the front door one day. <laughs> and the child said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Mom and dad's like, oh. <laughs> but that childlike faith, God, it matters to him. It matters to him that we believe that he can do it. When we petition him and we come before him, we believe it. Even if he decides not to do it, we know that he can do it. And, and I've got to the point where I believe he, he can do anything. Well, I know he can. He can do anything he wants. You know, you say some people believe this and that and that, and I don't believe all that. I believe God can do anything. And whenever we pray and go to the Lord, we have to believe it because it matters to him. It matters to him that we have faith. Two blind men came up to Jesus, and he said this, Have mercy on us, Jesus. And look at Mark 9, 29. They come up to him and say, Have mercy on us, Jesus. But Mark 9, 29, Then Jesus touched their eyes and said what? According to your faith, let it be done unto you, and their sight was restored. You say, let's back, you know, back in the day, you know, Jesus don't heal like that anymore. Jesus can heal any situation. Jesus can heal anything. He can do anything. 
But even if he doesn't, even if he doesn't, are you still going to have that faith, believing that he, he could? Are you still going to believe because it matters to him? You see, when we believe, when we believe that, you know, that God can do whatever, you know, whatever, then we have a faith that pleases him. And that's what he wants. It matters to him. Our relationships matter. Yeah. Our intent matters. Our motives. Our faith matters. You see, I want, you know, I want that car in Jesus' name. <laughs> I want this house in Jesus' name. You know, do you really have faith that God's going to do it? And then if he doesn't, are you okay with it? God's will be done. You say, maybe I just have, you know, just a little small faith. I don't have a big faith. Well, I pray today your faith grows. I pray your faith grows. Because this gets us to the fourth and final thing that I want you to realize that, that matters to God when you and I pray. You see, when you got the relationships matter, the motives matter. You see, having faith that God can do it really does matter. But that leads us to number four. God's will matters. God's will matters. John 5, verses 14 and 15. You see, his will is sovereign. It's good. John, 1 John 5, 14 and 15. I'm sorry, 1 John 5, verses 14 and 15. The very, very same John that says that anything you ask, I'll give it to you. Look what he says here in 1 John. This is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Verse 15, and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. You see, we can't just ask whatever we want and, and demand him to give it to us. We, we can't do that because then that makes God our servant. And God is not our servant. We are his servant. We can't just demand God to give us stuff. We have to say, Lord, this is what I desire. This is what I want. But most of all, God, your will be done. When you and I pray, God wants to know that no matter the way he answers it, he knows the best that's for us and that his way is right. And if we don't get our prayers answered the way that we want it to, we're okay. We still have faith in God. We still walk with God. We're going to stay with him no matter what. And that's what God wants. He wants his will to be done in our life, and we're okay with that. So when your prayer is not answered the way you want it to, and my prayer is not answered the way that I want, then we have to be okay with that. We have to be okay with that. Too many people are walking away from the faith because something happened and God doesn't care about me. Something happened, and God doesn't answer my prayers. Why would I serve a God that, does, that would do something like this to me? And they walk away. I see it all the time. You probably see it. They just walk away from the faith, and they get discouraged, and they get frustrated. But let me just tell you, Christ followers, when we pray, it's God's will be done no matter what. I'm still going to trust you. I know you know what's best. I have no idea what's best. I want this building so bad. <laughs> I can see so many things we can do right here. I can see expansions down the road. You know, we've got four acres here. We've got room to grow. We can make additions and make more room and so many outreach right here on the, on the main road, and I want it bad. But if God shuts the door, I'm okay with it. We may have to have a little talk, but no, I'm going no. <laughs> I already tried that with God one time. We was praying for the land. Worked months and months and months on that land, and man, we come all the way down to the last thing, and one thing didn't match up. And God shut the door, and I said, God, what are you doing? Man, this was our land. And two days later, he showed us the building. <laughs> two days later, after they closed the door, yeah. So sometimes you don't understand what's going on. And you get, don't get mad at God. Just say, okay, God. I don't, know, I don't know why this is happening. I don't know why I've got this health situation. I don't know why my spouse is sick. I don't know why I lost my job. But God, I know I trust you, and I know you've got this, and I've got faith in you. I'm not going to walk away from you. Your will be done. And that's what he wants to hear, and that's what he wants to know in your life. Don't get discouraged. Get encouraged. Because when God closes the door, he lets something happen. Something's good's about to happen. Somebody's going to get saved. Somebody's life is going to be changed. It's going to affect somebody. It's going to be good for the kingdom of God. And you and I that have received Christ as our Lord and Savior, that's why we're here on earth, not to live for ourselves, but to bring him honor and glory and to add more people into the kingdom. That's why we're here. 
And so we pray, God, your will be done. Your will be done because I know you're up to something. It don't make sense to me. It hurts what I'm going through. But God, you know what you're doing. Don't walk away from him. And somebody, you know somebody discouraged, you go encourage them. You go encourage them. And don't let them walk away from God. You help them. That's what God wants us to do. We cannot just do whatever we want and expect God to answer prayers for ourselves. It's according to his will. John 14, 14, as we're wrapping this up, I want to read this again. Jesus said, you may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. You can ask me anything in my name, and I will do it. In other words, if we're going to the Father, through Jesus Christ, it's according to his will. When we pray to the Father through Jesus, we pray for his will to be done. You see, Jesus gives us permission to go to the throne room of grace. Jesus gives us that right We don't deserve that, right? Jesus allows us. Think about that. The creator of the universe. And we get to go to his throne. Jesus allows us. How dare us be so selfish in what we want? Christians fight Christians because of selfishness. They want what they want. If we'll stay a church that will care about what God wants, if we'll stay focused on what God wants for our families, if we'll stay focused on what God wants for our church, we'll stay in unity together, (laughs) and we'll just watch God do what he does. Don't lose focus. Don't lose focus. Pray your desires. You may want a new car. You pray, God, I really would like to have a new car. But nevertheless, your will be done. If I don't get it, I'm okay with it. Lord, I've got a health issue. Lord, I know you can heal me. I know 100% just like that you can heal me. But even if you don't, you're my Lord. I'm yours. You may be single. You want to be with somebody so bad. You want to be with somebody, you want to do life together. It seems like it seems like it's just not working out right now. Let me, let me tell you something. Lord, I want to be with somebody. You pour your heart out. I want a relationship. I want to do life with somebody. But Lord, if it doesn't happen, I'm your servant. I'm yours. And I'm okay with it. You see, that's the way he wants us to pray. Faith believing. And there's going to be times you pray and he does the miracle. And you can use that for his honor and glory too. God will allow you to use that to share it with other people. Why? Because it will bring honor and glory to him. (laughs) It's not what we do, it's what he does. Relationships matter. Our motives matter to God when we pray. Our faith matters. But most of all, his will be done. His will be done. My faith rests in God alone. Let's all bow your heads this morning. Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for your word. And and Lord, I, I pray you just minister right now to people hearing my voice. It's you, Holy Spirit, that's speaking into our lives right now. Father, I pray for those that are discouraged. I pray for those that have been frustrated over a situation. Lord, I pray we all just realize that we're your children and we want your will to be done no matter what because that's the best way. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. No one's looking around. If you're here this morning, maybe you're frustrated. You've been praying about something and it hasn't gone your way. Why don't you just pray to him right now? Just tell him, say, Lord, I've been praying for this for a long time. And you're speaking to me right now. No matter what, your will be done. In this situation I'm praying about, no matter what, I'm not going to get upset with you anymore. I'm not going to, God, I'm not going to get frustrated anymore. I'm just going to, your will be done, and I'll trust you. Maybe you've walked away from God. Maybe you haven't been serving. You're back here today, and you're, you're hearing this message. 
maybe you're tuned in on TV and you're hearing this message because God's speaking to you. You've walked away from the Lord at some point in time and you're hurting and now you've come back and, and maybe you're here this morning and, and uh, you're realizing, hey, walking away from God is the worst thing I can do. He's my one true source of hope and help. He's the one that I need. Right now, maybe you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna just pray, Lord, your will be done. I'm not gonna walk away anymore. I'm gonna walk with you. I'm gonna trust you. If that's you, just pray. Just pray and do business right now. Maybe there's somebody that you know of that's gotten out of church. They've gotten frustrated because their prayers weren't answered. What they wanted to happen didn't happen. And they've walked away. And the Lord's laid somebody on your heart. My prayer is that you'll go and you'll, you'll give them a call this week or you'll shoot them an email or you'll text them and encourage them. Tell them that God loves them. And help them out with what you've learned today. If you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, my prayer is that you realize that's what you're looking for. It's in a relationship with Him. That's right. It's in a relationship with Him. That's the most important relationship that you'll ever have that matters to God. You said, Pastor Carl, I don't know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I want you to call out to Him right now. You say, right now, yeah, right now. Just call out to Him and say, please forgive me of my sin. The Bible says that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you'll call out to him, he'll forgive you of your sin. Wipe them all clear and give you a brand new start. You can become a child of God. You say, well, how do I do that? The Bible says you're supposed to confess your sins. Realize that you're a sinner and that separates you from God. But then you need to confess your sin to Jesus because he died on the cross so your sins can be forgiven. And because that took place, I'm going to pray right now. If you don't know Christ as Lord and Savior, why don't you just, you pray. You can pray along with me. You're not praying to me. Pray to God. Say, dear Jesus, I know I'm here because I now realize that I need you. I realize that I'm a sinner. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross so that my sins can be forgiven right now I ask you please forgive me of my sins I turn from my old life and I turn to you I mean this with all my heart my motive is pure I need you Jesus I surrender my life to you if you're here this morning you say Pastor Carl that was me I was here for that reason and I know I, I called out to him and I asked him to forgive me I need Jesus I need him bad and I did it, and I meant it with all my heart. Can I rejoice with you? Can I just rejoice with you? You made the greatest decision in your life. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. No one's looking around, and you're here this morning. Hey, can I just rejoice? I'm not going to embarrass you, call you out. No, no, no. I just want to celebrate. You say, Pastor Carl, that was me. Don't you slip your hand up real high. Don't even hesitate. Thank you for that one and that one. Somebody else. Somebody else. Wow. Somebody else made a great decision, an awesome decision. Praise the Lord for you being here today. You're now our brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're excited. Now walk with Him. And you pray, believe Him, but nevertheless, your will be done. Father, we love you and I thank you so much. Lord, I thank you so much for decisions being made here today. Lord, I know you've encouraged some people that have been discouraged. But God, we know your ultimate plan is the way to go. And we know that you're an on-time God and you'll give us what we need when we need it. And Lord, just use us. Lord, let us be your hands and feet, God, to further the kingdom. I know of two right here today. The kingdom has grown two more people today that will be in heaven for all eternity, God. Thank you for saving them. Thank you for allowing them to be here today. Lord, may we never take that for granted what you did for us on the cross. How we can live our lives so selfishly. No, Lord, Lord let us die to ourselves. So that our lives will bring honor and glory to you, the one who is worthy. Father, thank you for this church and for, the, for everyone here, God, for the opportunities you give us. Lord, we know there's much more to come. And God, we're excited because we're going to bring you honor and glory. That's why we're here. Father, I just thank you again for all you've done. We praise you. Christ's name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. Amen.
Yeah. When I'm far away from home And the cold wind starts to blow When I'm empty and alone I turn to you When there's hardness in my heart I can't see the truth And I'm wondering in the dark I turn to you And here in your holy presence It's all that I can do I Yeah.